All right. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Slettercast podcast. I'm Trevor Erickson, one of the hosts of the program. We're at another show this weekend. Last weekend, we were up in Canada. Now we're down in Utah. We're at the Utah Snowmobile Show uh, put on by by Snow West. And uh, today we have Mr. JT Cox with us. We've been working with JT for a few years now. Uh, One of the uh, epic, epic mountaintop snow bikers out there um so we're gonna we're gonna get into his story and and um learn a little bit more about possibly the mountaintop kit and what the differences are in uh in a mountaintop kit versus some of the other competitors out there which is kind of fun because it's a new kit so i'm it's a newer kit last year was the first year Mm -hmm. and so uh i'm gonna learn more about mountaintop in general we're going to learn more about jt we're going to learn about snow biking in general and uh so we're, we're excited to get that that kicked off so jt why don't you just uh give us kind of a brief intro who the heck is jt cox yeah yeah thanks for having me by the way um justin cox i came from uh i'm born and raised in southeast idaho uh, moved to Utah. Shelly, to be exact, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yep. Just right up down the road from you guys. Yep. Um, grew up riding dirt bikes and snowmobiles. The It was a family affair. Um, deep passion for snowmobiling from my grandpa down to uh, me and my brother. And <clears throat> so it just, uh, life evolved around that, it revolved around it and evolved from that. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. And, and you're now in Boise. Correct. So, what are you doing over there in Boise? You're uh, you you used to work with Carl's, correct? Now you're with Fox. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, what, what what's your what do you do there at um, Fox? I, uh, I'm the outside sales rep for Idaho and Montana. So I go down to your local motocross dealers and dirt bike dealers and lifestyle and mountain bike even, and uh, do the uh, make sure that they have what they need and are up to date and knowledge. Uh, on the product and yeah just yeah represent the brand all the way through how did you how that how'd that job come come uh, to pass how'd, how'd you get that job yeah um i started working it started eight ten years ago okay um i was working at south valley motorsports and that's how i got into the motorsport industry um that, that's what brought me down to utah from home and uh, ironically, the parts manager that hired me um, at South Valley went to work for Fox and uh, called me up 10 years later and said, hey, you know, there's wow. an opportunity in this region. You should you know, think about applying for it. And it all kind of accelerated from that really fast. And yeah, so, so you you were a Fox consumer. Yes. Before. Oh, yeah. Like so you're, always you're, since so like you're, eight years old. You're on the out, outside of the company. Now you're on the inside of the company. Yeah. What's like? What's like, I guess, maybe the biggest surprise? They're like, oh, I didn't know. Like, that's interesting. But now I'm on the inside. Now I, I can see that. Is there something like that that you can think of of being now you're on the inside of of, a, of the company yeah. working with them? I think the the biggest thing is, is like, I've always been the person like trying to, you know, get the next, uh, you know, like, how, how do I ride for you type of thing. Uh-huh. And now it's, it's interesting to be flip the script and uh, have people come into you on like how, how can you help me? You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's been fun to be able to do it when you can, but uh-huh. it, it comes at you so fast. And so many people, it's hard yeah. to like connect the dots sometimes. So uh-huh. that was like probably the biggest eye opener. Yeah. You know I mean? Have you been able to see a connection from your side of like, Hey, this, this type of person has a, a higher success rate or an easier chance to, to work with a company like Fox. Uh, dude, I honestly, I think these days it's creating value for the the brand, yeah. right? Figuring out what they need and when what you need, and then making sure that those two align and and being able to provide value for it. And I think that goes way beyond just Fox. Obviously, everybody, for, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, just making sure like what's your goals, what's my goals, and then let's you know collaborate and make sure that we're both fulfilled and mm-hmm. and getting where what we want. Yeah, if you can. Yeah, and we see this. I mean, every company here goes through has the same feel, things, right? Like, so many people come up to you, and it's all about, "Hey, what can you do for me? I right. need, I need this." Yeah. And as a as a company, you're sitting there thinking, 
all right, what are you going to do? What are you going to, re- what are you going to do in return for us? Like, how are we going right. to make this a partnership, a collaboration? Yeah. One where we're happy to work with you and you're happy to work with us. Yeah. Uh, and Jay, like we've worked with you now for a couple of years. You've been very vocal on, Hey, I, I want to make sure that I'm providing you as much value as you're giving me. So, mm-hmm. and then going in and doing that. Yeah. And so I think you've, I think you've, uh, you've mastered that concept uh, pretty, pretty well. And uh, so it's cool to see you at, at Fox, but uh, before Fox, you were a snowmobiler. Yeah. Right. Like you started on snowmobiles. Oh yeah. Okay. So grew up, well, you grew up on bikes. So you had that history, Mm -hmm. but in the winter you were recreating on snowmobiles. Yeah. And so what was when and so when was your first experience the very first experience on a snow bike yeah so it 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 was kind of a big chain of events right that unfolded over a few years um starting from third generation snowmobiler deep deep passion from grandpa dad uh, uncle and then my brother um got into motorcycles because uh, in the motorsport industry because it paid the bills. It was something I could do for seven months out of the year. And then, um, but snowmobiling was where the passion lived, right? Like the deep passion. And uh, when snow bikes came to about, like they were like kind of the tote goat, right? Like I remember the first person, he's like, dude, you're a good dirt biker. Like you should look into this. And I laughed in his face, like straight up. Like I was like, yeah, that's, that's not me. I'm going to ride the dirt bike. I ride the snowmobile. I like them and I like them Sabre. separated. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, this was I, when roughly that maybe was about a time 2011. Frame? It was right when I, dang. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and I, I thought that was like, a, like I got the idea, but it just, it wasn't a snowmobile. It wasn't a dirt bike. It just seemed, and it hadn't evolved to where it was. And thankfully, I didn't ride one then, because it would have changed the trajectory of my life. Yeah. Because I wouldn't have been what I expected. It would have been more of what snow bikes were in 2011, and it wouldn't have aligned with where I wanted to be. Uh-huh. Um, but then, a few years goes by, and in my 20s, and paying for all my own stuff, and don't have that like, you know, the access to a snowmobile, and I had to ride a dirt bike. I could justify the price of a dirt bike that I could ride seven or eight months out of the year instead of how a snowmobile that sat in the garage for seven or eight months. Mm-hmm. And, but then I turned into a place where I was almost resenting winter because I wasn't participating in it. And I finally was just like, I'm doing something. And my friend uh, rode a snow bike for the first time and came back so excited. He's like, dude, this is the real deal. You got to try this. And this was in 2016 now. Yeah. So now the... It, Five the years later, roughly. Yep, exactly. So a lot could have changed by then. A lot. Yeah. Revolutionary, basically, from at that point, almost. And then um, he's like, yeah, we're going to start the... We're going to start selling them. You should... You already have the dirt bike. Throw a $3,000 kit on your bike. The yeah. You know what I mean? Just yeah. a $3,000 yeah. kit yeah. onto yeah. it. Uh-huh. And then uh, I was like, you know what? I'll try it. It'll get me through a winter. And then it didn't take very long for me to realize I could... For that same investment as a snowmobile, I had a machine that worked 12 months out of the year. And then economical, I got... Economical, very economical there. Yeah. Yeah. Like, And then from there, I actually got to ride more days of quality riding on those days that the snow is less than ideal for a snowmobile. Uh-huh. It's still pretty good on a snow bike. And yeah. that was when it was like, okay, this is the real value for me is that I can get extra days on the snow of like quality riding. Yeah. Because it was so much more versatile. And so that's that, that it was like, this is the real deal. And the next year I built a snow bike that cost as much as a snowmobile. And yeah. that wasn't a factor. <laughs> so that <laughs> threw that one out of, the, out of the way, right? Real quick. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. So from 20, do we call it 2016 on you've, you were first choice snow a, on a snow bike. Yes. Is that what, yeah. how we would call it? Yeah. I bought that snow bike off that buddy's, uh, recommendation uh-huh and had to make that a snow check that had to wait all winter on this decision never even ridden a snow bike ever and i ride it down the trail i'm like oh my gosh would i just buy it? <laughs> this thing literally feels like i'm riding a tote goat just down the trail uh-huh. and uh <laughs> i was like oh my gosh and uh, i've got it in the timber and instantly okay i get this and then it was the first time i rode at home in my backyard where i grew up my dad had a house right on the foothills in east idaho uh-huh. so we can ride right from the house 
And I was riding zones in my backyard that I had never accessed on dirt or snow. And that was like, okay. The game the, all the do- on, yes, baby. That was the game on day right there. Yep. Nice. I was like, I've never been able to hit this zone. There's not enough snow or whatever the factors might have been getting into it. Yeah. Specific, specifically, that zone was, it was an epic zone, but there wasn't enough coverage of snow yeah. for a snowmobile. Uh-huh. And that's for sure. Yeah. Game on point. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, so my, my experience on a snow bike has been one time last, last season. Yeah. Uh, cow tag, right? Uh, at the cow tag event in Island, uh, in Island Park. Yes. And so you were up there and it was like epic of epic snow conditions. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'm, I'm going into that and I know those guys are like, like, dude, you need to be, if we're riding, you got to be on a bike. Like, come on, you're yeah. not taking a snowmobile with us. So I was like looking at the snow and I'm like, this is like an, this would be like one of the most epic days on a snowmobile. Mm-hmm. All right. That's what I'm going into this day. And, uh, holy crap. Besides, I told this story in, in a previous episode, besides losing my cell phone. Okay. Yeah. In the middle of the back country. That was a dang fun day. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I had never, and I don't ride a lot of, uh, dirt bike. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I know how to ride a dirt bike. I just don't spend many days a year on one. So I was a little nervous. The funny story is we're looking at this, at this, uh, you call it maybe the, the Eastern mountain range. If you're up there in Island park. Yeah. And, uh, I'm like, Hey guys, they're like, where should we go ride? And I'm like, we should go over there. Okay. And they're like, well, how do we get there? I'm like, well, we can go across the flats and then like kind of go through some drainages and make our way up. Mm-hmm. And Cody Kirkland was like, nah, dude, we're going to just go here. And then we're just going to side all the way across and get over there. We'll, whatever we've come across, we'll figure it out when we get there. Yeah. And that's not, that's not what, how you think on a snowmobile, no. you know? Yeah. Cause it's just, it's full of trees. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I was like, okay. And, uh, they got me into, into some pretty gnarly stuff. I was a little, you know, my anxiety meter went up a few times <laughs> yeah. that day, but where where the light bulb went off for me because you know being in such deep powder and stuff that was like i was used to that on a snowmobile yeah and but where the where the the light bulb went off for me was on the way out and you drop you drop elevation quite a bit and Mm -hmm. then you kind of have gradual elevation down through the trees Mm -hmm. pillows tight trees on a snowmobile you're just Eh, 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 picking your way slow yeah strategically just cruising yeah on the bikes yeah just eh, eh, eh. that was when it was like oh so this is what it's like yes and uh that was my kind of like light bulb moment of okay i get it now Mm -hmm. i get why why you would choose to do this yeah and why they wanted you to leave the sled at home yeah exactly and i'm a snow builder still like i love them like i'm not the person to convert it and say like i'm never going back yeah i love them but yeah, that day when you're with the boys on snow bikes and you're crushing it, they're going out for a day. Like, it's fun to have everybody in alignment. Like, yeah. and you just barrel off of like descents and don't think about to the depth of like, okay, I need to plan A, B, and C yeah. on this. Like, okay, like a plan A and half a B. Uh-huh. I, I'm, I'll, I'll round the odds on yeah. this one. You know? Yeah, there were some cr- there were some crazy stuff like a cr- like a big creek drainage where I'm just like. We are we are done. Yeah, <laughs> we're done. <laughs> we're staying the night here, boys. Yeah, <laughs> and they're like, no, we'll just build a little platform right here, and then we'll just like bunny hop this, and then we'll just cruise right out. I'm like, right, I'm gonna watch you guys do this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and I had it all on film, but it's on my phone that's still in the mountain, yeah, mountain somewhere. So I have two of those experiences where so, the phone's like epic day. Yeah, the phone's still somewhere. Yeah, someone's gonna find it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so you started on. Uh, uh, a timber sled kit back in the day would, yeah. would that be what it right and then um two years ago i guess it would be it would have been last year yep uh you were part of the first wave of athletes mm-hmm. for mountaintop yeah so what's that like you get you get a new company popping up mm-hmm. how do you buy into that and switch from like a proven name a proven brand that's been out there in the industry how do you buy into that for me i had been it because of my time prior i had had the opportunity to get to know alan yep and 
his and Alan. For those who don't know, Alan Alan Mangum, yeah, is the owner of Mountaintop. Correct. Yep. And also, yeah, and started Timber started Sled. Timber Sled. Yep. And uh, so they're like, I had a deep respect for him. And then our passion for creation of an evolution of the snow bike aligned really well. And as soon as I heard about it as like the project that he was working on, I was like, I, I want to help. Like, I want to participate in this. What, like, how can I um, contribute? You know what I mean? And for me, that was right at the same time as I was going to Fox. And I knew I was going into a corporate position, which I've never, I've always flown by the seat of my plants and pants, never had a, pl- a plan, just like, and just absorbed life. Yeah. And I was worried about my life being too structured and too deep on work and then going out and playing in the way I was, like in regards to the, you know, the athletic standpoint I was doing. And for th- that transition has been really refreshing to be able to have a collaborative effort. Like if I have see place for improvement, I can call him specifically and say, Hey dude, like let's look into this part or, you know, and, and sometimes he's already ahead of me. And he's yeah. like, oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, let me share with you what I got on this. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Whatever. So it's been extremely exciting for me and the creative mindset that I am, um, to be able to like exercise that, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and then again, it's, it's, it's got a, the, our, our team has very close knit and family oriented in a lot of regards. Like, yeah. So it's been exciting uh, and honestly, a, a, an honor yeah. to be even considered in that. That's awesome. And so being part of that first wave last year, first run at it, uh, has the team, like what, how's the team tr- transformed? Like, year one still have a family that kind of that close-knit close-knit vibe Mm -hmm. there yeah for sure yeah cool yeah no it's been strong like um and if anything better like over the last year yeah we're learning we're we're having more time to collaborate over the last year you know we spent i've spent more time with you know uh, my friend darren teal we've been you know teammates for years and last year was the first time we rode together that wasn't on a photo shoot or work Oh, you wow. know what I mean? Yeah. And we 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 blasted like three times last three whole separate weekends and got to ex- share experience for fun and and again I think it's brought him and I deep like a lot closer. Yeah. And so yeah, that's what to me that's what it's all about. Like yeah. that's it goes back to that third generation snowmobiling. Like you go out on the on, on the weekends and you were with your family and your friends and it's like still to this day is my favorite type of riding. You're going out and just enjoying and have yeah. A, yeah just with your crew of yeah winners. not not having a a mission or something that you have to accomplish for someone else while you're out there but it's just yeah now we're just here for the experience today guys yeah and then like doing our our uh, media stuff last year it was literally just a, another ride and f- photo comes out and video comes out and we had a, a goal to hit but it was still like a fun ride we still a lot of high five and not that it always it always is that way but it was again just a little bit more like a typical weekend ride. Yeah. So. Okay. So, let's talk about uh, the mountaintop uh, transfer one twenty nine. That's the kit, right? Yeah. Okay. So the mountaintop one twenty nine transfer. Yep. Twenty twenty three versus twenty twenty four. Okay. Let's start there. Yeah. What? What? Uh, are there? Are there any? Is there anything? Are there any big? noticeable differences in there that you can speak about or is it pretty much kind of the same kit just kind of refined a few yeah a few things um so 23 to 24 the transfer uh skid technology the frame everything we've been riding since 23 is is just been polished up you know you got your first uh first year of um you know corks and stuff like that that come up and growing pains for lack of a better word yep. so that stuff's all been addressed but ultimately the kit's been the same Okay. And then the new claim to fame this year is the three and a quarter with a three and a half inch pitch track. Yep. And for me, coming from three inches, going to two and a half, I was very concerned about being able to be the leader in the group and be able to punch a trail with three or four guys on my back that are on three inches and, you know, creating a congestion or whatever yep. in, a, in, a, in a hairy situation. And so... <clears throat> having the three uh, the two and a half performed for a lot phenomenal 
like it didn't ever feel like it held me back. There was mm-hmm. a couple places where I'd get stuck where others wouldn't, but it wasn't like a, a holding the group up or yeah. anything like that or congestion. So that was great. Okay. And so now we got three and a quarter. I can't even begin to tell you my excitement <laughs> to be able to have that. How well two and a half did. I'm so excited to see what three and a quarter yeah, is. Yeah, add that extra link there. Yeah. And, and, and she's and, over there right now. So yeah. we'll probably s- splice in some photos and some videos here. But so JT brought this this kit to the show completely naked. Yep. All black. Mm-hmm. And she looks just a little bit different right now. Yeah. Yeah. We put <laughs> just, some glitter on her. Just a little bit. It's been a showstopper uh for sure people are digging it over there and so we'll get some close-ups of that and you can uh we'll throw throw it in here in, into the video but yeah okay so that's kind of the differences between the 23 and the 24 kit mm-hmm. now let's say i i am a snow biker i'm not really like i guess married mm-hmm. to a brand mm-hmm. right because we've got it's not just timber sled versus now mountaintop there's there's a few other companies out there yeah Let's just say I'm not married to a certain brand. Mm-hmm. I'm open to exploring. Yeah. Why would I choose to go mountaintop? What are some things like yeah. with your experience? Because yeah, you weren't just you're not just a, a mountaintop only guy. You've been on some other platforms, but like, why would we? Why would someone like me choose? Yeah. Um, for me, the mountaintop it it comes down to the versatility of what the unit has been in the past i've i've had two different applications i use for uh, an exploring guiding leading day and then a rowdy like go huck this thing off of stuff right yeah and then there was some uh you know you could do the overlap and it's been great like there's nothing wrong with that um this this kit though has been perfect for a versatile experience especially someone that doesn't know what they want you know you can have that confidence inspiring feeling and still get rowdy when you want yeah uh, uh on a different uh, just a little bit sharper level than what i've been ex- uh you know used to so that would be the versatility allowing you to grow and figure out what you like yeah does that make sense and then yeah and then just go on the gas yeah. pedal on that aspect of the sport correct and you've got a yeah. machine that will allow you to do that yep and and the way my bike set up is like I, it's pretty set up in between so yeah just with some body english i can get it to activate and be lively or uh less body english and a little less active uh, athletic activity in it yeah um i can turn my head and not worry about it darting off the trail or anything yeah. like that so yeah so uh, a question that i have as kind of an, an outsider of snow biking industry mm-hmm. are are we as snow bikers are we concerned as much about weight in the in the in the kit as we are with snowmobiles and does that weight is there much of a difference in weight between different manufacturers of snow bikes like is that yeah is that looked at like how how we look at different snowmobile manufacturers or is it like you know they all kind of look the same mm. and though therefore the weight's kind of the same or is there a difference in the weight should we be focusing on weight um is a blend right like there's like what we experienced in the snowmobile industry a few years ago where the snowmobile got too light to so the durability wasn't matching up. Yep. I would say durability is king yep. in in most snow bikers' perspective. Um, most of them are packing a lot more luggage on them because we don't have built-in luggage pieces. Exactly. So we're used to adding, like, I mean, I run pretty minimalistic storage, and that's how I shed my weight, not to mention, like, that kit just being a natural little bit on the lighter side. Uh-huh. Um, so, yes, it's a factor, but I wouldn't say people are – you know, grinding edges off or putting tie bolts and stuff on these yet yeah. to, to get those minute um, changes. Uh, I, and I'd, I'd say another variable is efficiency, right? Like maximizing the efficiency of the track so that it's not tolling down the motor yeah. more. Gotcha. What you're seeing. Okay. So uh, durability, in my opinion, is king. Like making sure the durability is there. Yeah. To get you out of those hairy situations we talked about. Uh-huh. You break that machine down and it's a different, it's a different day. Now yeah. it got extremely hard because you got to figure out how to get a, something in there to either fix the problem or whatever. So, yeah, that's yeah. My, my take on it. And they're a little bit harder to, to drag out. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> At least they come apart in two pieces, so you can drag that's, it out. That's and true. Be able to there just, you go. Just, just it, tear the whole thing down and boom, throw it in a, <laughs> throw it in a, on a, on a sled. Yeah. Pull it out. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah. That's definitely a, or a sad durability. Okay. Now, at the sport in general, what's, what, 
I guess, what advice do you have? And I know you kind of, you shared your own experience and in that there's advice there. What's your, what would be your advice for a new, a noob, a noob, someone who's like, I'm open to this. Mm -hmm. I'm a sledder, yeah. but I'm open to this. I ride dirt bikes. Yeah. Uh, what, 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 what would be your advice to someone who's like, just get into it? Because it's not like you just walk up and buy, buy your 850 or, or whatever from the yeah. shop. Like there's some work. Mm -hmm. Unless you're buying it off someone who has the kilt, the kit built. Right. I mean, there's some work that goes into it. Yeah. Right. You got to, you got to make it a snow bike. For sure. You know? Yeah. No. Um, so I would start all the way from the, the first experience, the first ride. And just like what Cody and those guys gifted you with is like, don't take like nothing against the snowmobiler, but go with snow bikers where snow bikers go. Yeah. So you get the real effect. And not a demo pro demo ride that's in a flat field because that's where the snow bike is like probably the least appetizing. Uh huh. Truly go experience what the snow bike experience is, and if with snow bikers, yes, because with, that's because yeah, that's important because you guys are a different breed, man. You Your guys mind? are you guys are out you guys are recruiting people. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, Whereas snowmobilers are like. You like if you're stuck, f figure it out on your own, man. Like right. I'm gonna go do this, yeah. right? But dude, those guys were like stoked for me when they when they could see that I was enjoying myself. Yeah, they were like, "Heck yeah!" yeah. And they were like super stoked for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, so yeah, make sure it's a snow bike specific event that you or a day that you are going to have with guys who are snow bikers and yeah, because you guys are just a bunch of recruiters out there. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it's like it's a very. Uh, <laughs> I, th I feel like a little bit, it, there's less of that, like, let's go crush them and get them stuck and leave them and humble them. Yeah. It's, and it's more of like uplifting and like, let's, let's just, yeah, it's fun. We're all high five and we're stuck and let's get it out, uh, you know, get through this, this section and again, build on that uh, vibe. You had a, a very good experience with the, the crew that you guys are with. They're just yeah. incredible. They're always the great crew. Side. Yeah. So, um, the uh, to get back on topic with that, like, going from the experience like that part is the first getting the rider a good experience right off the bat to truly experience it and then two like you said the the bike it's not a turnkey setup mm -hmm. so making sure that you're getting that coaching on the machinery and so you're investing your dollars investing your time in the right direction yeah would okay. be the next thing like uh you know there's so many great resources and it seems like every region's got like a good anchor out there yeah you know and you know all the way from i mean colorado all the way to canada there's yeah there's good anchors in there uh -huh. and, and that's another thing is you, you reach out to any of these snow bike athletes and they're they're going to share their knowledge with mm -hmm. you like okay yeah go talk to the, my guy over here like you know darren you can call him up he's just lo fully hook you up mentally yeah. or with educational stuff right yeah and then connect it off so yeah love it yeah okay so for the next well, let's get Justin's. Let's get JT's outlook. The mm -hmm. next two. Let's go like we'll we'll do this two question. The next two years, where do you see the sport of snow biking? Boom, we snap. We're two years yeah. ahead. What's your prediction? Like, is, is there anything different? You know, like, or maybe prediction, but like, what what would you like it to yeah. be like? The next two years, I feel like are going to be pretty exciting you're gonna see another you know and the more people that are getting engaged in this like you got the mountaintop adding in they're the new kids on the block you already have the timber sled you already have the yeti coming back again or yep. getting uh you know back um bought out with the the original owners and uh cmx crushing it and stuff so the technology the bikes are getting better like so two years already we're have a phenomenal tra trajectory I think five years is going to be really incredible because we haven't even embarked on the actual, like, let's turn this thing into a true snowmobile turnkey thing. Right. Like, I think. So what are you saying? What are you hitting at? That there may not be I think there's, two things combining into one? Not necessarily. What? I'm just implying you have two totally different avenues that are pretty incredible that you can go. You can keep it the dirt bike, keep it the um, one investment for the whole year yes. concept. Or the ceilings, like that's what got me into snow bikes is the ceiling. There's no ceiling here. Mm -hmm. We can take this anywhere we want to go. 
Like you, there's people here at the show that have a snowmobile engine in a, in a snow bike single ski machine, you know, and it's not a new concept, but the ceilings, there's no ceiling there. Yeah. We can just build our foundations and our blocks all the way up in that category. So I, we haven't even tapped into the depth of what that could be. Yeah. When you put that 850 and that machine right there, it'll bonkers. Can you It'll imagine? I mean, holy smokes. Yeah. I mean, look at that, that boost right there on the side, other side of these cameras. This is incredible. Yeah. Like what it does. Yeah. Like, and you put it in that chassis, it'll be even more. Oh, yeah. So, not okay. saying that I'm not saying that You're it's not, happening. I'm just saying, like, that would be, that no, would be nice. There's right? no ceiling. Uh huh. Yeah. It doesn't matter. So, let's, uh, we, we do kind of a fun thing at the end of every episode. <clears throat> we call it our lightning round, but it's not quite so much a lightning round. <laughs> we, just, we just call it that. Uh, we asked the same two questions. Question number one, okay, so mm-hmm. so Mountaintop Transfer 129 shows up at, at, the, at the dealer. JT goes and picks it up. He gets his bike, okay? They're both clean, naked, nothing on that thing. Mm-hmm. What are the first three must-haves? First, first three things. That you are doing to that thing. Yep, brand new snow bike. Uh, we're going to start with the thermostat. We're going to keep the temperatures regulated. And then we want to keep the, em- the to help combat that is going to be an engine jacket okay. or uh, I read SXS slide plates. It acts as a skid plate and that. Okay. So that's number two. And then number three is going to be, um, I'll just draw a blank, uh, thermostat, engine, ja- uh, snow shed, and then um, intake. We're going to keep the intake and, and, Customize it a little bit more like a snowmobile. Keep the snow out. Yeah. Then that's literally what that bike has right there. That's it. Yeah. Thermostat, s- snow shed, intake. Yeah. That's all. A little bit different way to answer that question when talking to a snow biker versus mm-hmm. snowmobilers. Yeah. What some of the things they put on, the snowmobilers put on, you know, we think are necessities, but they're kind of wants, you know? Right. Yeah. Whereas a snow bike, those are, those are like. That's not they're, negotiable. They're like actual must-haves. Yeah. You yeah. know? So yeah. that's a non-negotiable for me. If you build a bike from me, it will have all three of those and a temp gauge on the thermostat. Yeah. So you're actually seeing it, you know? Yeah. But, um, yeah. Okay. I like it. So that was, that was uh lightning round. Number one, like light, lightning round question two, mm-hmm. JT, this is where we get personal. <laughs> we get deep. Okay. Yeah. We're going into the archives here. Okay. Yeah. We're looking for something juicy. <laughs> <laughs> What's something that, you know, social media or people in the industry that that uh know you as jt cox yeah what's something that they don't know about you what's a secret that one's that one's a hard one because i am a pretty open book and you call me and you ask me you know anything in regards to this world or of of, uh, uh, the snow bike and stuff like that pretty open book and it took me a second to think about that but uh i adopted a plant-based diet about two oh. and a half years ago and so it's not something i share but um primarily plant based i still okay. eat i still love steak and stuff like that i'll eat it sparingly like okay. once or twice a month but it's not something i express much but uh-huh. it's been the best pain management i've had eliminating the inflammatory, really? inflammatory f- foods and out of my diet as most of my following knows i um shattered both heels in 20 uh 2013 and had severe chronic pain and stuff like that that followed that and to a point where i walked like an old cowboy for years Mm -hmm. and uh that was probably the most pivotal thing but i don't share people with people like yeah because it seems like you said it's personal and juicy yeah and it's but it's been pretty incredible okay so a follow-up question we're not being very lightning around here though but i gotta (laughs) i gotta ask this one give me like a a a regular day Uh where you've adopted uh, plant-based what's a typical day of co- food consumption look like for you then yeah well so i've always loved to eat like i am an emotional eater or whatever like I, I love doing it for uh the enjoyment of it right so i eat a lot of food um and typically i start off with like a shakeology or like a uh a, 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 what i drink is shakeology and it's like a meal replacement it has okay. everything you need um for the day in regards to like your base so I start the day off with that and with like, um, and then I eat lots of like beans and lentils and, um, that sort of thing uh-huh. for lunch. And then usually Steph and I will, you know, make a good, you know, healthy dinner 
again, based around like I eat a lot of carbs and that like potatoes, obviously yep. uh, potatoes being at home too. I, I integrate a lot of Yeah. <laughs> but okay, yeah, okay, no, it's, it, it, just kind of working around. And you've done this for how long? Sorry. Uh, I started it in 2020. Yeah, so life so was already is, like. So this is like you don't even think twice about doing this now. This is just the way life is for you. Yeah, it's been. It was so. pretty pivotal. Like again, coming from a, a place of like meat and potatoes, literally, is yeah. like your main part of your diet. And um, for 2020, everybody's lives were going to change, right? Me and Steph adopted it together, and so our whole household, like, it was really easy to just change it and then it was fun it was something we were doing at home and we were eating foods we'd never eaten before oh, like yeah. mixing these types of vegetables and stuff like that so it's pretty exciting to uh exciting for that time yeah right we're stuck at home and, yeah. and whatnot and so then it like okay like life got back to normal and then that was my new normal for lack of a better yeah. but again i still love a steak and stuff like that but this just flipped flipped the um nutritional yeah pi- uh, pyramid upside down, I guess. Yeah. But, cool. Well, thanks yeah. for sharing that. Yeah. Now we know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So JT Cox, where can people go follow you? What channels are you on? What do you have? What, what other, you know, what, what else do you have going on in the space that people can go engage and yeah. learn from you? Thanks. Yeah. I, uh, Instagram's my main platform I use. Um, so that's Justin Cox 205. Uh, and then I kept it simple all the way through. So Facebook and TikTok are both Justin Cox 205. Mm-hmm. I haven't been engaging with them as much, um, but we'll get back into it. It's, it seems like I always ramp up again back in the winter. Yep. And then um, Relentless Riders on YouTube. Again, we'll have to expand a little bit more next uh, winter, but primarily yeah. Instagram, Justin Cox 205. Okay. Awesome. All right. Hey, thanks for, for uh, hanging out with us today. Once again, we're at the Utah Snowmobile Show yeah, in Sandy, Utah. And uh, there's people roaming around all over the place. People are excited for the snow. Probably going to be dropping snow here, hopefully in a couple weeks, if it's anything like last year. Fingers crossed. Yeah, it's incredible. And uh, we'll all be out on a mountain somewhere. Yes, sir. All right. Thanks, guys. Yeah, cheers.